Welcome back to my channel. As always, I am very excited for today's video and this one, as you can tell from the title, is going to be all about NASM's OPT model. Now, before we get into it, if this is your first time seeing my face, hi, my name is Samantha, or Sammy for short, and I'm a certified personal trainer as well as a young mom. So if either or both of those things are of any interest to you, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be informed when I upload all of my future content. You can also go ahead and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Sammy for short. Now, with all that being said and out of the way, let's jump in to the video. For starters, what is the OPT model? So, OPT stands for Optimum Performance Training, and this is a fitness training system designed by NASM, which stands for the National Academy of Sports and Medicine. This system progresses individuals through a three-level, five-phase process. The three levels include stabilization, strength, and power. And then within those three levels, there are five phases, which include stabilization endurance, strength endurance, hypertrophy, maximal strength, and power. Now I'm going to kind of dive into what each of those mean and why they're important for your training and how you can incorporate these phases throughout your fitness journey. Level one is stabilization, and this consists of one phase, which is stabilization endurance. Now stabilization endurance is the foundation of the OPT model. It's where everyone should start, beginner, or even if you're more experienced, you still should make sure that your foundation has been set, especially if you've been off for a while, you shouldn't go into lifting crazy heavy weight. You should make sure that the foundation has been set for you, that you have proper form so you're able to move further ahead into more of your intense strength training. Generally speaking, you're going to be performing a higher rep range doing stabilization movements. So this is going to mean anywhere from 12 to 20 reps. And this movement does get performed fairly slow and the weight is reduced. So you're using a light weight with a slow movement pattern to help you perform muscular endurance and ensure correct form and technique. So your form is more important, I will always say this, your form is more important than how much weight you lift or how fast you move. None of it matters if your form is off and that's why we need to start with the basics. Now what is muscular endurance? Well muscular endurance is the ability of a muscle to exert force against resistance over time. Now even though you're using light weight you can still see muscle growth. I know a lot of people think that lifting light means that they're not going to gain any muscle. You still are especially if you're starting out but even if you're not as long as you're doing the appropriate amount of rep you will still see muscle growth and this will be due to enhanced joints and postural control and coordination the primary focus of doing all of this is to enhance proprioception or a movement in a controlled unstable environment proprioception is the awareness of the position of movement in your body and again we're starting out with all of this because it is working on proper form so the whole controlled and unstable environment really means that you're doing the movement slow obviously the proper upper rep range, higher reps, lighter weight, like I've already said. But the unstable part is going to mean that you're doing a lot of single leg movements. You might have assistance with a stability ball or bands, things of that nature. So this would be something like a single leg balance, a squat jump with stabilization, step up to balance, single leg bicep curls, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Now moving on to level two. Level two is strength. And within strength, we have three phases. Yep, that's right. Three. So phase two is going to be strength endurance. Now this is where the client starts to accumulate heavier weights. Now with that being said, when you increase that weight, you're going to drop the reps slightly. You're still going to do a fairly high number of reps, but it's still going to be between 8 to 12 per exercise. And this phase is incorporating superset techniques, which means you're performing one exercise after another. In this phase, it's going to be a traditional strength exercise, followed by a more stabilization-based movement. And ideally, you still want to be utilizing a similar motion or targeting the same muscles with the exercises that you choose to superset together. So a perfect example of this would be a superset of a bench press immediately followed by stability ball push-ups. Now your sets are gonna increase to two to four sets. And like I said, your rep range is still staying high, so you'll be between eight to 12 per exercise. So that means within your super set, you're going to be doing 16 to 24 reps. The benefits of this style of training is that it leads to building strength and endurance as well as having an increased caloric expenditure. So as well as building strength, don't worry ladies or some men maybe, you're not gonna get bulky or anything like that. 
it's the biggest myth in the book. You'll put on muscle, define it, have that toned look as a lot of people like to say, but I don't like that word. Um, but that's what you'll be getting, as well as helping to still produce caloric expenditure or lose weight. Within level two, the next phase is going to be phase three, hypertrophy. So this is the next step up. Now this is where you are really building strength and developing muscle. Now again, you're still doing this with all the other stuff. It's just increased now and the biggest way of doing that is by increasing the weight. This is ideal for adaptation of maximal muscle growth, focusing on higher volumes of work at a more moderate to high intensity and you will be taking minimal rest periods between the exercise sets. This results in cellular changes that increase the overall muscle size. And this is also beneficial to people who want to alter their body composition through fat or weight loss so long as the caloric intake, rest periods, training intensities, sets and reps, and rest periods remain appropriate. You can still see weight loss and fat loss with this. Now this typically involves three to six sets of 6 to 12 reps with the intensity of 75% to 85% your one rep max. So you are increasing the weight significantly as well as increasing the amount of sets you're doing, but you're decreasing the amount of reps you're doing, doing a more moderate set. The last phase in level two is maximal strength. So this is working towards enhancing the client's abilities to produce maximal muscular force. So the absolute max that you can do, this is what it's working towards. And to accomplish this, you're lifting nearly your one rep max, ranging from 85 to 95% for your one to five reps. Now doing this requires consistent progressive overload with much higher intensity. And then longer rest periods are generally required to do this. Anywhere from one to three minutes of rest periods. So if you're noticing throughout this entire strength portion, as you start lifting heavier weight, you increase your rest time, you increase the amount of sets, but you decrease the amount of reps. That way you're not pushing your body to such extremes that could potentially cause injury or that you can't function correctly. Now on to level three. This also has one phase, which is our final one. Phase five is power. Power is focusing on high force and high velocity. So one method to increase your power is to superset contrasting loads. So what does that mean? Doing two, is performing two exercises back to back that biomechanically work the same muscles or a similar movement pattern, much like we talked about in phase two. But with this one, the first movement should challenge close to your maximal strength of one to five reps. So it's going to start with your heavier weight. And then the second exercise should challenge moving relatively low loads as fast and explosively as possible for a higher rep range of 8 to 10 reps. You start with the heavier load, the harder movement for a shorter rep range, and then superset it with your next movement which is going to be more explosive, more powerful, with a lighter weight. A perfect example of this is going to be supersetting a bench press immediately followed by a medicine ball chest pass. And these benefits go way beyond seeking to improve athletic ability. A lot of people think power is just for athletes and it is phenomenal for athletes, let me just start by saying. However, this performance can be easily modified to work for any client. In conclusion to everything I've just mentioned, like I said in the beginning, you should always start at phase one when beginning your fitness journey. And you should never progress to the next phase until you've completed the first. So, how do you know when you're ready? Ideally, it's best to be working with a trained professional who can accurately kind of track your progress and see where you're at and determine best if you're ready to take the next step. However, if you are doing this on your own, that's totally fine. You really need to get in touch with listening to your body and being honest with yourself. So anytime your movements or training style begins to get too easy and you're finally getting comfortable with it and may also be start to become boring, that's when you know you kind of need to switch up what you're doing and potentially move on to the next phase. It's important to note that you can also come back to a prior phase anywhere in your fitness journey if that's where your goals align because our goals are constantly changing. Example of this is when you're bulking or cutting. And really just remember to listen to your body and keep yourself educated so that you're not moving through a phase that could potentially hinder your progress or harm you. So that is everything I have for you. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got a lot out of it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and let me know what you would like to see from me next. While you're at it, make sure you give this video a like and share with your friends. And that's it. So with all that being said and out of the way, I'm going to go. But before I do, I want to remind you all to stay positive, be active, and most importantly, do what keeps you healthy.